Hello everyone, I am Gander of the Gaming Clan, Vato Clan, and the video that you are about to see does have part of the game missing in it. And the reason for that is because when Twitch TV, the website, uh, began to delete their archived past broadcasts, some of the video segments were not able to be saved when I ripped all of the video. So in the interest of having as complete a Dominion history as we possibly can here on YouTube, uh, I'm uploading this video anyway, even though a portion of it is missing. Uh, so check down in the video description below for picks and bans or something like that, or to see who won in the case of it being a video that's missing the end of the game. So enjoy this little peek into the uh, past of Dominion, uh, in this case a fragmented peek. Uh, thank you. And with permission from uh, Dominate uh, Dominion slash Dominate Gaming's owner, the feed team, here you are. In there. So overall, just, you know, in terms for PEX versus Field Divide, their team composition needs a lot of work for Field Divide. They just need to kind of look at which champions work with which. So uh, that's something that they, they should be taking a look at for this game if they really want to take PEX to a game three. That is very important, and we do see the uh, bands coming out in Italy, Kale, Wukong, Amuut, Hemo, Evelyn, right quickly as well. The chat bands, Lulu, Cast, Jace, Kha'Zix, so not surprising on the chat bands, not really surprising as well for the bands um, over on the client side. Um, yeah, the Wukong actually being banned out, I think that was the only thing that was actually played. I think it was played by Pays, Evelyn, Child Support, and they banned it out themselves. Yeah. And Evelyn, sorry, as well. <laughs> Um, Evelyn is an incredibly strong pick. I believe Field of Vibe doesn't want Evelyn to fall into Painkiller's hands there. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, Elise is also a nice backup in case you want another uh, AP assassin, so which you see indeed picking up there immediately. Uh, Zyra picked up by Nadarar Man, probably going to go to Half Hearted. Half Hearted uh, plays uh, fairly well, Zyra. Uh, Zyra is good at abusing both Rylai's and. Um, Blackfire Torch uh, and um, in combination with her plants because they both apply uh, the passives of each of those items. So we'll see what uh, Half Hearted can do with that Zyra. Uh, We're seeing... I was about to say, yeah, the Trundle is being shown, but I don't think they're actually going to pick the Trundle. I'm surprised that um, Field of Vibe didn't actually pick up like, the brand or something later, or now they show the brand and they're actually going to pick it. Um, I'm surprised that they picked the Zyra first, though. I mean, again, the Elise was shown and it got picked up right second. Usually we see Netarani Man pick that Elise up first, but they picked up the Zyra first, and now they're picking up also Brand as well. What do you think that Zyra pick is actually going to be, it really means for Feel the Vibe right now? Um, it's interesting. They're really on the AP caster side, like really heavy on the AP casters. So you'll have to see Zyra and um, Brand try and protect each other from assailants. And you'll see probably Blueberry on that Leona there uh, try to dive towards both Zyra and Brand, so they'll have to protect each other. Uh, we see the Urgot pickup as well, uh, probably going to be passed on to Sauron. Uh, unfortunately, for Field of Vibe, they have two more picks, and they really, really need to have a front line of some sort. As well as, if you can see the Painkiller picking up the Kogma, that means... Field of Vibe really needs an assassin of some kind. Otherwise, that Kogma is just going to go uh, uh, untouched. Yep. Yeah, he's just going to rampage and rip through Field of Vibe there. And I think this is one of the mistakes that Field of Vibe makes just about every tournament where they, they don't pick an assassin to deal with a hyper carry of some kind. I feel like they're still going to pick the Trundle, and they're going to do really well with the Trundle either way. Um, I, I mean, they have another pick. They're probably going to pick up. I would say like a Zinjo or a J4, they try to close the distance, but then again, a Buddha Rice with that Kogma, I mean, we've seen before each and every time, Zinjo Nature, he flashes out of it and then still does enough damage output at the end of everything. So, again, very tested with Pays Evelyn Child Support, doing a really good amount of, well, comfort picks for themselves. Although, I'm pretty sure Field of Life have a little bit of comfort as well. They did have that with the Zyra before, they've, they've shown that as well, but Zyra and Half Heart are going to be picking up with that brand. That's very interesting. I, I'm pretty sure that the Trinity pick is not actually going to be locked in. That Diana pick, probably actually going to be locked in, and it's going to be Die Now 
with the one, the only Garen. So, not surprising on that pick up for the Garen because I know Dynell loves his Garen. But that Diana pick, mm, another AP tank. A lot of AP damage actually coming up from Field of Vibe. Yeah, um, we're probably going to see Diana bot lane, very common bottom laner. Uh, in terms of front line, the front line for Fuel of Vibe doesn't really need to have all that much CC. They have Urgot with the slow, uh, Brand and Zyro with ranged CC. So if uh, Dynov's Garen just waits for a proper initiation, he can easily jump to the back line and do some work there. We see the Nunu pickup, probably going to be passed off to Infeed. Infeed known for his Nunu play. Nunu just a real pain in the ass when he sent bot lane. Just so much sustain through consume and spell vamp. It's just ridiculously powerful. Although I will say that Diana can eventually outscale Nunu. So I don't know if that's the best pick to counter or to try and fight uh, Diana bot lane. We'll, we will see how that plays out. Yeah, definitely indeed. And we're going to be starting up this matchup again in just a little bit. Game number two, starting out with some very interesting picks for this finals matchup between Dominate, I mean, between Field of Hive and Pace Evelyn Child Support. Dominate Domain number 48. Again, guys, 49 is coming up soon. Check it out next week, dominatedominion.com. But also check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash dominatedominion. For every 1,000 Facebook likes, you can get a t you can get a chance at a $10 RP card. One of these days, I will actually say that right before I give misinformation. But do check out those pages for any good stuff about Dominate Dominion. About to get into this game, um, not really anything else to really say about it other than a lot of comfort picks. That's all I have to say, except for someone in the chat room who's saying, you know, Armor, Diana. We don't really see him on these assassins slash APs. He's going to be playing that in mid, and I'm pretty sure someone's going to go bot. And yeah, Armor is going to go out on a limb on this one. This is going to be really interesting to see how he deals with this. Yeah, uh, the Diana pick is actually really interesting. I've only seen Armor play Diana occasionally in blind pick mm -hmm. uh, whenever we play together. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he does in a tournament setting. So, um, and some guy was Kalen Storm, who mentioned that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Armor has been talking to me a bit as well because he does do, um, I, I've actually met him during a solo duo queue over in Summer Shreff. He plays a little bit of uh, good jungleage. Hecarim is his uh, favorite pony, but, um, yeah, Armor, we'll see how this comes about because this is another little interesting thing. And it's probably going to be Sauron against what you said, Nunu. That's going to be really, um, actually, that's going to be a big mismatch, I believe. Um, as long as Siren can take or make his place and kind of stay in the back with the Crystal Charge and then hitting with the Asset Hunters, Envy's going to have a really hard time at bot. Um, actually, we'll probably see Diana bot lane. So, okay. hmm. Instead of Urgot, I think. Oh, well, hopefully we'll see how it will actually work out. Yeah, armor Should going play, bot lane. It'd be place your bets. Here we go. Yeah, this is definitely <laughs> place your bets because, again, feel the vibe. You have to bring out a really unique um, kind of start up because, again, you have both in the AP carry and another AP carry. Although Nidoran Man can play a little bit more supporty, so then be just peeling and dealing. How far did same way peeling and dealing? I mean, yeah, uh, I, like you said at the start, feel the vibe, the picks. It's it's, it's very very interesting kind of start up. Yeah, you, see, you, were, you keep talking about um, how people go to picks that they feel comfortable with, and you see half heart on Brand, Dynob on um, Garen, Sauron on Urgot, and I think sometimes that can kind of be a hindrance if they don't play champions that uh, you know go out on limb here and there. You see, they don't really have an assassin outside of Diana. Diana's more of a bruiser than anything. She'll have some trouble getting to the back line if Kogma goes on a rampage there. So we'll see what happens um, if, you know, if Diana goes top, you know, that means they have some potential to try and get to Buddharize's Kogma. Um, we will probably see some support play from Zyra. She does have a lot of supportish abilities, ability to check brush with her seeds and to stall out with her plants fairly easily. Not to mention a lot of AoE CC between her ultimate and her snare. 
so we'll see what is interesting there. Uh, we'll see what Nero Man does with his Zyra pick. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, also as well, I think it's Diana's level 1 to 6, and that's why I think he sh he'll, he'll actually go bot for a little bit. I feel like he'll still like rotate the top or something like that, or go for ganks and such like that. But I, I do get what you mean with, well, yeah. There's probably no other way armor can go uh, top. He has to probably go bot just to at least get the levels at the start. Um, but really interesting comp that's coming in from Field of Vibe. On the other hand, it pays Evelyn Child Support. I mean, yeah, it is comfort picks, but their picks actually do pretty well with each other. Hopefully it'll work out for the team of pays Evelyn Child Support. Yeah. One thing I want to mention here is that we actually have, if you look at the summer spells, we have uh, Clairvoyance on Nunu. Uh, so um, uh, Infeed is so sure about him laning bot lane with Nunu that he does not need the extra help in terms of winning that lane or even stalling it out. So we will see what happens there. Yeah, definitely, and we're going to be starting up with this game that Iron Man, Half-Hearted, Dino, Sauron, Armor. You I mean, you guys see them before, they've been here all the time. Feel the vibe, Syra, Bran, Garen, Urgot, and Diana, respectively. For Paisel and Child Support, the same little thing, no subs this time. It's Envy, Panzers, Blueberry, Painkiller, and Buddha Rice. Bot, Nunu, Nunu Bot, J4, Leona, Elise, and Kogma. Game two, this is the final matchup possibly for Field of Vibe to try to come back into this. While wow, scoring lane over onto the right side, Paige, Evelyn, Childsport. This could be their time to shine to finish up the series. Yeah, we see some, uh, everyone picking up their items. We see a Kindle Gem pickup by Leona there. She wants the early cooldown reduction and hit points. We see the Rejuvenation Biscuit on both uh, Zyra and... Uh, Nunu there, so they're both heavily into the utility tree. Really interesting. Half-hearted going for the early crystal, uh, crystal and tome, trying to rush either a sweeper or a black fire torch. With Nunu picking up the chalice for the extra mana sustain. So uh, other than that, most of the picks or most of the buys are pretty standard. Yep, definitely with this definite, you know plants floating over midair. Pretty cool seeing that over there. Um, we're going to probably see another CV come in just a little bit before they actually start up the takes. And feed going to have that CV just yet again. We use to see who's going to be bottom, who's going to be top. CV going to go down in probably a little bit, probably closer to 130 so that they can actually see what's going to happen. The team will feel the vibe. They're, they're ready for this. They're going to be sure. And they're going to send armor bottom and the rest of the team top, and then you're going to go bot out as well. And yeah, we're going to see this come into play, feel the vibe. And you're going to be down 1-0 for the matchup. Can they finish up and actually catch it back to 1-1? One -one? Yeah, let's see if feel the vibe can actually pull something off here. Um, Half-hearted going around, trying to avoid some of the damage. Knowing that Booberry likes to engage early there, it does jump onto Nairam Man there, but he's all alone. Painkiller getting and Budarai's getting snared there with the repel going out. Trying to jump on jumps onto uh, Nairam Man that gets exhausted and immediately taken down by Dynov and Sauron. So right now it's a 4v3 in favor of Field of Vibe. They might be able to take this uh, windmill fight pretty easily if uh, Painkiller doesn't get there in time. Buda Rice is standing off of plan. Dianov now trying to get that windmill. They're going to engage. Booberry going on to half hearted. Half hearted going to be knocked up and taken down very quickly. Good job by Elise getting the Neurotoxin. Now Netarari Man getting chased by the Spider Lady. Can she actually get picked up? We do actually get the Garrett taken down. And we're going to have that Netarari Man going down as well. Sauron going to be the last one picked up. And again, Pay Zevlin Shouts. We're going to be able to pick up the top. Can they actually respawn and take it? I don't think so, but we do see a brand being very cheeky, half-hearted, just going rushing right towards up into the drill. Yeah, it looks like Jarvan spawned, so he's going to probably try and stop half-hearted there. You can see uh, that was a very nice engage by Leona and Jarvan. As soon as Leona hit the Zenith Blade, Jarvan followed up with the Damascian Standard and Dragon Strike combo. Looks like Urgot is going to go for a gank bot, lands the uh, grenade, and tries to follow up with Acid Hunter's Infeed, getting just out of range though and picking up the relic. Has to fight off a 2v1. 
Let's see if he can do this. There's a lot of minions. It looks like this is going to neutralize. Half heart did get to neutralize uh, mid as well. So they're trying to split up field the vibe here. Uh, both bottom and mid are getting capped. Let's see. Uh, too much is going on. Nunu is just trying to run for his life. Goes down. Uh, Half heart goes down to Jarvan there. Nato Ruin trying to escape as best as he can with his plants. Trying to slow Elise. To capture the boneyard and back off. Meanwhile, Kogma is just slowly pushing his way towards the refinery. Yep, he's going to have the help of his minion friends. going to be able to at least get a little bit of damage. He gets stopped off by the minions over there. And Dynal now going to get to chase on the boot of Rice. And these hit him down as Dynal are going to actually take it down this kill on the boot of Rice. Boot of Rice has to flash away possibly. Basically, he's off it down and he's not going to actually flash away. He's going to get just it down. And now die now in a little bit of trouble. He's gonna get taken down from the Ithacan Surprise, so one for one trade overall, but still a lot of good stuff. Netherite man, now gonna be taking a lot of damage into this. Gonna have to probably proc the passive in just a little bit, and it is gonna be taken down by Painkiller on that kill. Or do you see Nina getting chased around Saren? Gonna go over to the bottom while we had the Diana go to mid lane to top. Not surprising with that change. And now we're gonna see what Diana is gonna be doing for this little matchup. Armor. Going to have to use his skills and his abilities to be a very, very big presence on this map. I think he's just going to back off for now and try to regroup. Half heart again, caught out by Panzers and Blue Rice there. The uh, Cataclysm going down to finish off Half Hearted. Unfortunate for Field of Eyes. And he's going to have to wait an extra 20 seconds before Half Hearted gets back up here. Leona going to try and re engage from bottom, uh, from the back. Uh, Dino. Uh, Scaring her off though, and Sauron trying to regroup with the rest of his team here. Zyra using her plants to effectiveness to check brush. Very nice. And armor, it looks like he's trying to fight Nunu 1v1. The exhaust going off, trying to use his passive and his ultimate there to finish up. Unfortunately, Nunu is far too tanky, has too much sustain. Getting some help from Dynop to uh, neutralize the tower. And Nunu getting down very low, neutralized by Dynop. Looks like they can get the quest here. But meanwhile, Pex is engaging at mid. Nero Man going down extremely quickly, uh, as well as uh, Sauron. Half Heart escaping barely with only 150 hit points. Wow. Very good job by Pex, noticing that there's two bottom engaging immediately at mid. Oh, but we're gonna see Boo in a little bit of trouble. Gonna have to stun down to the other can die now. Now die now's in a little bit of trouble. It's gonna be Brutal Rice pushing a lot of damage on Dynov, and we're gonna see him get back off of there. Brutal Rice gonna get one Arcane Barrage. Is he gonna be enough? Pooh Berry gonna pick up the kill. Yes, he will. Through the clips. Is it gonna be enough to pick up Half Heart as well? He's gonna miss off on everything, but that passive is gonna tick down, down, boom, boom, and it's gonna be down for him. Meanwhile, over bottom lane, Diana gets taken down from the Nunu, and we do have that J4 actually can pick up the kill. Or J4 getting picked off from the one, the only Sauron. Yeah, it looks like Nero Man and Half Heart are trying to uh, chase Kogma. Kogma too fast though with the Void Slime. Nero Man getting stunned and taken down during the stun duration. Wow, nice play by Panzers and uh, Painkiller there, eliminating uh, Nader Man almost immediately without retribution. Yep, Panzers just doing a really good flag toss in, and well, a plant lady down. That's going to be a one thing for him, but he's going to go straight down the bottom lane as well. Massive standard is up line, but he's going to miss with the Golden Ages. And he actually finished up. He's gonna use the Mustang Standard actually to use it very passively. You do see how hard it kind of rotated over in the bottom lane. That um, the Elise is gonna go down as well. And Half Heart is waiting for this. Gonna catch up. But now that we get seen the brush, gonna miss up on the Seer, hits up with the Brandon Tiller. Conflagration was down as well, but did not finish up on the Sun. So very, very sneaky little take for both AP carries right there. But we do see Pex just still loading up. I'm gonna get the clips onto Sauron. Sauron's gonna have a little bit of problems, but he's just gonna back away from this. And then our Iron Man over there gonna get seen by both half hearted or Nether Iron Man by that CV of Invade. Now Invade still talking to Armor. Armor's doing his best as he can, but the biggest thing about um, Diana that's really, really dangerous as well. Her mana levels are pretty. Unfortunate when you keep on spamming abilities. Although one for one trade, it feels like Enfeed is just owning and controlling this lane over bot. 
Nunu's sustain throughout the early game and mid game is incredibly strong against champions that uh, do not have uh, like uh, grievous wounds effects. So in general, she'll need a little bit of help. Looks like Panzer is trying to defend against Sauron and Dinoff here. Sauron going to take him down under the tower. Fortunately, it looks like both Leona and Elise are converging on this point. Probably going to clean up uh, what was left over. Blueberry going straight for Dinoff. Painkiller going straight for Sauron. The voracious bite taking out Sauron almost immediately. And Blueberry just going to chase Dinoff away. Stun. Diana here to help. Trying to take out her rival there. Uh, ooh, just gets the health right just in time. Really close there for Leona. Unfortunately, the health probably was there. Looks like Painkiller is going to take off Half-Hearted here. Misses the Cocoon. The Seer, the Seer misses from Half-Hearted, but the uh, Volatile Spiraling catches Half-Hearted and picks up the kill for Painkiller there. Look at the items for Enfield right now. He has the things on Holy Grail. He has a Spirit Visage against Armor, who's pure AP. Still building up the Black Fire Torch, but having the build that Negatron Cloak as well. Enfield is just loving this matchup for Rear Pot. We better going for a gauge, which is going to be the first one down. Isn't it a right man? Painkiller going to trade off from his life. I mean, do you see Kogma finally going down? Breeder Rest going to be used that thing as far onto Sauron. Now be wary, in a little bit of trouble, not gonna get helped out over in the top lane, so this is gonna be a little bit of 2v1 action. While we do see some 2v1 action over bottom lane, armor taking a lot of damage, a lot of shots, and a kill going down onto armor. Be wary, getting chased upon Sauron, getting the chase on, on the Booberry, gets the charge, and gets the Acid Hunter. Great job by Sauron picking up the kill, gonna pick up the Windmill. Uh, meanwhile, we're gonna see the point being contested upon over by the quarry, Panzer's gonna try to get in there. Armor comes in there, Lunar rushes in, hits the Crescent Strike, but cannot finish up with a second Lunar Rush because they used the Lunar Rush right before that. And you have some action coming out in the jungle, half-hearted, and get out of there. Buddha Rice and Painkiller are just gonna separate as well. P Buddha Rice is gonna be pushing up with the lane, has that Phantom Ant, they're gonna be building in some more damage later on. And um, yeah, the later this game goes for Petty Zeppelin Child Support, while we see armor being be taken down that room by, um, the more dangerous is actually gonna go for Field of Life because they can't actually deal with this Kogma. On top of that, you really get to this Kogma as well. Yeah, but with Kogma, uh, you see Bitterrise always pushing the lane, he's farming there. Painkiller gonna get almost get caught up by Dinov there. Ooh, bearing saving him just in time, picking up the kill onto Urgot there. Kogma, meanwhile, chases down Half Hearted and kills him. And uh, uh, Panzer is cr dunking poor Garen there. And this will lead uh, Field of or Pex to take top point. Meanwhile, Zyra is trying to uh, help out Diana bot lane. Not sure exactly what they're trying to accomplish here. It draws in at least down bottom. This would be an interesting fight here if this actually happens. I think Finfeed wants to go for this. He's saying, I have tons of MR, you can't do anything about this. The absolute zero almost full channel there. At least getting taken out almost immediately. Unfortunately, Nero Man getting taken out by minions. Minions so powerful. Uh Kogma is there to try and assist as much as he can. Consume, gaining him 300 hit points in feed, surviving. That's why Nunu is so feared there. Solar Flare going out, Blueberry trying to protect this as much as possible. Although the game unfortunately ends here due to the remainder of the video not being able to be recovered, Pays of Evelyn Child Support would go on to take the victory against Feel the Vibe in a 2 0 uh, finish for this particular evening that these games were played on and uh, moving on to become the champions of Dominate Dominion number 48.